Hello, I'm Christopher Prentice, uh, Harmonic Bionics. We're out of Austin, Texas, came out of the Renew Robotics Lab of uh, University of Texas at Austin. So what we're doing is attacking the status quo in shoulder care. Uh, we'll get into the disease states that go into shoulder care, but the status quo in shoulder care is extreme labor. There's a lot of people on one patient. Um, you have somebody who's stabilizing, somebody who's moving, and then a PhD level position that's uh, observing and making sure the session goes well. We're bringing that to a state of an art where you're, the clinician doesn't have the arduous nature of, of the um, session. They could really focus on what is necessary. We're taking the analog of the session and making it digital. Uh, we're automating it and then also bringing new capabilities to the uh, clinician who's uh, running the session. What's one of the big problems in care, especially in the upper extremity, is there is a large, strong demand for it. Uh, just in the U.S. alone, there's over 3 million new shoulder injuries every year. There's over um, 800,000 new strokes, 600,000 of them need some level of upper extremity care. And then there's a multitude of chronic uh, neurologic and musculoskeletal conditions that feed into upper extremity care. Um, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, ALS, um, Parkinson's. Um, so that's a strong amount of patients going into this, while on the opposite side, the actual caregivers, the clinicians, are stressed as it is. There's not enough of them, and they have one of the highest rates of workers' comp out there. It's like heavy manufacturing rates, 20% incidence of injury every year by these clinicians. It's because they're doing patient transfer all the time. Where do the systems go into? Well, in the United States, the majority of the upper extremity care, depending on your level of, um, of injury, is done in an inpatient rehab facility. That's a wing of a hospital with dedicated beds, a building on the hospital campus that has dedicated beds, or a nearby freestanding facility. Or there's a multitude of outpatient clinics that do it as well. What I'm focused on is the 2,500 comprehensive um, outpatient clinics, the ones that have the, the level of staff and the level of equipment necessary to do all of the disease states. So you have in the top of that pyramid a very large beachhead of about 3,700 different facilities just in the United States. Again, with a lot of different patients going into them for care. Eventually, as we uh, improve upon the form factor, we'll be able to also get it into skilled nursing facilities. There's over 15,000 of those and the 38,000 ortho and PT clinics, because as I'll show you, we have a level of assessment that also brings value to the uh, orthopedic community as well. Build that up, you have a, a, you know, a beachhead market of about 2.4 billion. The greater market, when you attack it, is about a $34 billion market. We'll go to market, you can buy the system, it's a $240,000 system, but we're actually going to market with a subscription model, robotics as a service. We have the ability to do it per session, or per month, however that works to accelerate the adoption. This is the system itself, very quickly, it has multiple capabilities and capacities. Um, it has a, a where it de-weights you, so it's like being in the pool, so you have full control and free, uh, free movement. It also can do pre-program movements at any level of assistance, from zero to 100% assistance. And then we bring also a new capability called bilateral sync. And this is important from especially post-stroke victims who have the ability to move on one side of their body but not the other. They become their own control. With their good arm, they control their down arm. This is important for two reasons. It's proper orthopedic movement through the proper scapulohumeral rhythm. And secondly, they're actually thinking about it and trying to move, which is very important for neuroplasticity, relearning how to move. Because post-stroke, you don't have an orthopedic issue. You can't move your arm, but it's, it's in your head. You gotta learn how to use it. But the problem is you don't use your arm, it becomes an orthopedic issue. You get subluxation, and then you also maladapt, and you move wrong, and that hurts. So really quickly, um, this is in Brooks Rehabilitation in Jacksonville, a uh, very good rehabilitation center. This is one patient. He's about two years out from his session, so he's going to an outpatient clinic. He's showing his capacity to move. He can't get his, his hands above his head. We give him a bit of assistance, and now he can do a movement that he hasn't been able to do in two years. And allow, this is very hard to do with, with caregivers. There'd have to be two people behind him bringing him up, doing it properly, making sure you're moving the shoulder correctly. So we're already enabling uh, you know, him to recover where he hasn't been able to before. 
Again, under the hood, what are we doing? We're also digital because we are getting dynamic, vibrant data sets. Um, if you were to look at the status quo, it's moving your arm and, and snapshots of holding a goniometer up, which is a protractor. That's literally what's going on. They hold it up and they take down readings and they write them down. That's the state of the art today. We can do a very dynamic data set. We know full range of motion and all the planes of movement. We know force generation, how much uh, actual force the patient is, is using. So we can even see at points in the arc is their weakness. And this helps to inform the clinician and caregiver what should be done next. Then we have a robust ability to bring out data, the data for the patient so they're better engaged about what's going on. You can jump on a Peloton and get data on what you've done, more so than a person who's going through physical therapy for their sh shoulder. We're gonna bring that level of data to them and more. Not only that, it can be put into the EHR, so instead of 15, 20 minutes after where the caregiver clinician is writing notes and typing them into an EHR, it can be ported in very easily. The robot knows exactly what was done and it has all the data for it, very simple. Team, uh, I've got great team members. We have been there, done that. So that's the thing about that. It's uh, a team that has been uh, with MedTech and robotics, and uh, we're delivering a product this year. Uh, we are, uh, just got our FDA registration two weeks ago. So with that, we've already sold four systems. We've installed two. I'll have two more installed in the next few months. We have five uh, more letters of commitment that we're now turning into PO since we now have FDA. Uh, we're protected under our patents. We've done two clinical pilot studies. We're in a third clinical pilot study as well with Brooks. Um, so, you know, right now, uh, very quickly out of the gate in our first year of revenues, you know, we have 150 down. We'll be looking toward about a million this year. I'm doing a controlled commercial launch. Um, and that's what we'll be talking about for what we're asking for now. We are, have a um, 3.75 convertible note bridge round open. What that delivers is this controlled commercial launch. We'll have a cadre of accounts, up to about a dozen of them, that will be able to be assessed and, and ready to go for a Series B next year uh, for full-scale launch. So we're bringing the win-win-win. We're taking care of the patient. They're getting better sessions. They're getting the repetitions that they need. They're getting engagement. The facilities are able to take care of their clinicians and caregivers better. They're getting the data that they need. They're able to attract the patients into their centers. And for the therapists themselves, we're, we're bringing their wisdom to the session and not necessarily their arduous labor. And you know, for example, one of them would have to do this. You're supposed to do three, 400 repetitions each session. Imagine doing that for eight hours a day. That's, it's ridiculous. So that's what we're trying to address. Thank you very much.